Morning everyone, welcome back to North Sea Angling. They join me on a beautiful sunny Suffolk day, heading down to the river for a bit of a forage. We'll see if there's an early bass. Again, see how it goes. Oh, look at that water clarity today. Couldn't ask for anything better for foraging. Let's try and dig some gaping clams. Lying down on deep and shores, the threat of electrical storms, you found my heart. Alright guys, there we have a perfect representation of a gaping clam. Perfect. Quite often, when there's fish about, when you wade up through the shallows like this, you'll see all the little sand gobies and all the little sand smelts and all the little prawns and shrimps scurry away as you're walking through. And I can't see any signs of life as of yet. I Meaning there might not be that much about. Shouldn't be long though. Right guys, not getting any bites on the rods. Didn't expect to. This is what I'm really here for. Try and make a nice dish out of this with the wild garlic and forage and a few clams. Beautiful. Right guys, if any of you have ever seen this down on a beach or a river flat, what it is, it's a bit of drainage pipe, as you can probably tell. But what it really is, it's a pita crab trap. Now what happens is when crabs kind of grow, they need to shed their shell, a bit like snakes that, uh, shed their skins as they grow. And when they do, they need to find somewhere sheltered and they need to find somewhere that's still gonna retain water because they need water to reharden their shell. So what people do is they put a small hole underneath and they put the drainage pipe on for a bit of shelter and the crabs go in there while they shed their shell. And the reason they do it is because peter crabs are great bait. A peter crab can be any species of crab it's just the name given to them when they're peeling their shell. Hi guys, I'd love to be able to show you what's inside the peter crab traps. However, those peter crab traps I just showed in the video aren't actually mine, so I'm not gonna check them. I'll leave them for whoever they are. Um, I did try to go and show you my own peter crab traps, which are a bit further up that way. Um, however, unfortunately, when I went out, uh, my waders broke, which is why I got this bit of string wrapped around my neck. Tied into the top of my wave on the way, this is a bit of a temporary fix just so I can get some content today. Still not seeing any signs of fish life this far up the river. So, what I'm going to do is just concentrate on the cockles and clams, I reckon. I'll leave the lines out. You can see the tide now coming in. What I might do is start trying to search these little pools just where they're coming in. See if I can see any... Oh! I said that. Lovely. Perfect. Can you see it yet? Muscle. So the only thing I've caught so far on the line is this very greedy, tiny crab. Oh, away you go, little fella. Uh, the tide's starting to come in quite quickly, so I'm not going to have much longer. Maybe try and get a couple more clams. I head back. That's that. Head home, get these shellfish purged. Uh, and then hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to show you a nice catch and cook. Take me back. Beautiful, innit? 
Okay, I'll quickly just show you now, uh, before I came out, how I managed to find and forage the wild garlic, as well as afterwards what I came across, which is all I can describe as a weird wildlife video. What I'm going to do is try and find some wild garlic uh, to cook with the clams or whatever I can forage. What you're looking for is a wooded area with a source of fresh water, which I have directly behind me. Let's see if we can find some. Perfect. Oh, I love that smell. It's almost like when you've got garlic bread cooking in an oven. Perfect. old chives as well and this would be the weird wildlife video and now to cook Apparently is I used a saucepan, uh, waited the clams opened on the barbecue, and I'm now going to put them in some sweet chili noodles. Right. I feel your heat inside my veins. It's the bound begin to fade. Sleepy eyes still.